Well, g'day folks. Welcome to another episode of Paint with Rod. Today I'm down at the beautiful township of Chumut in uh, New South Wales. This is the Chumut River here behind me. And uh, it is just an absolutely beautiful location here. It's autumn. We're in the foothills of the snowy mountains. And um, just a sensational spot here to be uh, looking for subjects to paint. Maybe doing some plein air painting. A little bit chillier than what I'm used to. <laughs> Um, but that's okay, the sun's out now. Galah's just going overhead there. Um, and we're going to look for some places to paint, try and do a little uh, plein air sketch, but most importantly, gather up as many photo references as we can to use back in the studio. So let me show you around Tumut and uh, see if we can find a place to, to start painting. So years ago when I uh, first started out painting, I had the good fortune to be uh, having a chat with Richard Chemersky, who was one of Australia's uh, great landscape painters. Passed away, unfortunately, about a year ago. And I remember saying to Richard, he'd been a professional artist for most of his adult life, saying, you know, what's the hardest part about becoming a professional artist? And um, his answer surprised me, actually. Um, he said, you know, come out with new ideas of what to paint, the subject, what am I gonna paint? And uh, that really surprised me, but I took it on board. And uh, ever since then, I've had a practice, I guess, of um, making sure that I spend time out amongst the subject that I want to paint. So if you want to be a landscape painter, it helps to get out in the landscape, even if you don't necessarily paint plain air, but just to get a feel for it, um, just to immerse yourself in the subject itself. Um, you know, gather photos and maybe do some sketches. If you can do plain air and you want to, that's also great. There's a lot of great Australian landscape artists and landscape artists around the world who will tell you that plain air painting is the key to really developing your skills. But not everybody is able to do that. Like I have knee problems and back problems, so I'm a little bit limited as to how much time I can spend plain air. Um, but for me, it's coming out here. It's a beautiful autumn day. We're in Tumut. Um, New South Wales near the snowy mountains and um, just sort of soaking up the atmosphere, the landscape, the environment, collecting as many photos as I can um, to use back in the studio is, you know, really helps inform what I'm doing. And when I come to a place like this, I mean, if you have a look around here, um, there's just subjects in every direction. And I think one of the mistakes I used to make was that I would only get a couple of photos, right? I'd, take a photo here, photo there. But since 
I've really started to develop my painting. Um, collecting reference material has become one of my most important activities that I do as an artist. And so I'll come to a place like this and I'm going to spend maybe four hours here just in this one spot. Now, this is just one spot in Tumut, right? I'll probably spend about four hours here <coughs> um, getting as much video and photo reference as I can. <coughs> and just really soaking it up, you know, like looking at the reflections and how the reflections work in the water and you can see how shallow the water is in here. Um, this is a very popular spot for fly fishing because the water's so clear. It's coming down, I imagine, off the snowy mountains. Have a look at this little bee here. Uh, those bees have been following me all around here. Um, trying to get in my van. <laughs> no worries, mate. Um, yeah, look how clear the water is. So it's a very popular spot for fly fishing. And um, snowy mountains are just, well, sort of at the foothills of the snowy mountains. At the start of the Mount Kosciuszko Mountain National Park. And so, you know, just coming and spending time here and looking at that scene in front of us here with this beautiful poplar tree and the beautiful, you know, golds and yellows and, and different types of greens. There's fish flopping in the water just over there. I don't know if you saw that. Um, you can see them breaking the water there, obviously getting bugs and insects and so on. No wonder it's popular for fly fishing. I just saw three jump out in a matter of moments. Um, yeah, and just really immerse yourself in the, in the subject. I mean, in this one spot here, you know, there's a, a painting right there. If we pan around, we've got the painting of the longer view down um, down the river mouth there. We've got to see that gum tree leaning out against the off the embankment. Um, so there's more gum trees here. There's more of these sort of fall type trees here. So there's two or three paintings right there. Then you've got this embankment over this side that's all lit up. Um, all the foliage there is lit up. And then you've got this racing water here. So you can get some movement, foreground rocks. So that, you know there's subjects everywhere. And that's why I spend time really just looking. If you just jump out of the car, snap off a couple of photos, you might miss so much, you know. So spend a few hours and just really soak it in and, um, you know, take in as much as you can of a scene. And then you've got reference material you can use for life. Now, one of the things that I've found is when I come to a place like this for the first time, it can be a bit overwhelming. And um, oh, there's another fish jumping out of the water over there. Um, can be a bit overwhelming. And so, like, I remember the first time I went to Capity Valley. It was just so incredible. Oh, did you see that one? <laughs> I'll just keep the camera panned on that spot for the moment. Yeah, Capity Valley was so overwhelming the very first time I went there. So sometimes when you find a good location like this here in Tumut, it's worth coming back, you know, making a manual trip or um, coming back multiple times. When it, The more familiar you become with it, um, then, you know, the more you'll see and the more you look, the more you'll see. So um, anyway, that's just a little bit of a thought about how I think about coming to places like this. I try and travel f maybe four times a year um, to places like this that I've never been. This is definitely a place I'll come back to though. The last three years I've been going to Stanthorpe at this time of year, um, you know, autumn in Australia, because we just don't get autumn where I live. Um, and I miss it. So um, I've been coming to Stanthorpe for the last three years. But I think I'll be coming back here next year and possibly for quite a few years after that at autumn because this is just a little piece of magic.
Thank you.
Well folks, I've been at it for about 35, 40 minutes now. I'm gonna leave it there, I'll show you in a moment. Um, unfortunately, my back and knee are playing up and can't stand for much longer. So um, that's the scene I was painting through there. Really wanted to try and get these sparkles of light here and the little clips of light on the foliage over on that embankment there and down in that depth, that distance. And so I've done a real quick little sketch of it. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up here. Um, but yeah, I was struggling mostly because I'm like on this river embankment here and my knee and back aren't too happy at the moment. So that's what I got up to. But I do think it'll make a, uh, a nice little subject on a wider sort of landscape um, panel or canvas. I'm definitely going to do this one back in the studio. Um, and we'll do this as a project for members of the London Paint Academy, I think, because it's just such a great subject. So there you go, Tumut River. Thank you.